Uh, our next speaker is our very own Raya Al Habsi, who is the business development manager for MYC Muscat Yacht Club. She is also a man's first female sailor. She will be uh, speaking on skills development for women in global sports. And uh, we were originally going to have her online because she was supposed to have been in Malaysia for her graduation, MBA graduation. But we're lucky to have her here in person. Over to you, Raya. Thank you, Omar. Actually, this is more released, no people. <laughs> but it's fun or more important as uh, my colleagues are here, my boss are here. So they will be exciting actually to know me more. So today you have a chance actually to give me more questions, which is nice. It's only us in the room. So I would like just to put a short video rather than talk. Just uh, this is a video I made. Go ahead, Sohel. We say it again, thank you. And we say again, uh, since there is opportunity, they still have a chance to do more and more. So today, as you see, uh, uh, I did the sailing and uh, Alhamdulillah, that was a good achievement for me. But nothing else does happen by coincidence or by chance. As I start my first slide, the chance started when I was in college, when it's come actually how I enhance and I developed my leadership, uh, leadership uh, skills. When I was in the college, of course, it is the first time I knew that uh, I can be more than what I thought. So I was a uh, president of student council and I did a lot on that time. So when I graduate immediately, uh, as everyone in my family, in my family there is a two group. The petroleum engineering and the rest are a business. So as you are grow up, anything your parents already put you in the school because they want you to be this, uh, this is what you want you to be in the, in the future. They want you to be whatever, a doctor, an engineering, a lawyer, whatever is there, right? But actually, when you start to learn about yourself, you discover about yourself, what I am I'm doing, what I like to do, then here, is you start to change your life. This is where your personality or character has to change you. So between, as I told you, two group in my family, the, the business uh, people and the engineering petroleum, I stand up in between and I told them, no, I want to learn sailing. And it was like, what is sailing? Then when I showed my parents first time the video, it was like, no way. You must be crazy, but think about it. I'm sure tomorrow you graduate as a finance, you're gonna do finance. And here I said no, then I start to do something completely different. And I start to take the training, I start uh, to learn more and more. And of course the story is very long and it took me two, three years of very intensive uh, uh, program and uh, leadership skills and training a lot, uh, good nights, bad nights, till I end up to be a first Arab woman seller to be nominated around the world. So, so yeah, I didn't stop there. Here is what you want to see. Of course, maybe people that left now, people who are in mind here. From yesterday till now, you have heard a lot of people from HR actually. CEOs, uh, HR, development uh, uh, learning, OBD. They were all telling you about actually opportunity, skills, skills, skills. 
I think since yesterday till now we had thousand words of skills, 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 right? Whatever is there in the market, they're giving you, even the country giving you, uh, to not uh, start unless it starts here. The HR gives you everything, the country will spend money on you, but if you don't have a passion, if you don't know actually what I want, what I actually want to spend my time on, there is no use of all these people who are here telling you what they are, what they are doing in an organization. There is opportunity there. There is a lot of people spending money a lot in the organization for people to know to develop their skills, you know, to, to be better uh, uh, employees. But there is no use if you actually didn't describe who I am and what I want. For us as a graduate, of course, when I graduate, the first thing I was like, I want to go to the uh, big organization. I will start with this and this and that, right? And then I graduate as an engineering, I have to be an engineer. And we all like to go in the field of searching for engineers, right? Because I graduate as an engineer. What if you sit down, you see like, actually this is not my field. I'm not passionate to this work. There is no bad to say no. I study four years in engineering, but actually I'm not good in engineering, I'm maybe an invent. We have seen a lot of people spending a lot of money and energy and time being learning something, but actually when they start to work, they're not passionate about what they're working. They don't look forward. Although that work, rather than to become a fun, it just torture him them. You know why? Because the passion is missing there. We are going by destination. Ah, only the, the society see I'm a doctor, I'm a CEO, whatever. But what about you? What about you, you value? You, do you add the value on that organization? Do you add the value about yourself? You should ask. It's fine like you spent seven years in doctor, but actually you're supposed to be a good, uh, good DJ. Right? At least, yes, why not? At least when you be a good DJ, you're doing good. Even if you do overnight, over time, overnight, a day after day, you know you don't feel tired because you like what you're doing. You like what you're doing. You'll not be tired. You'll not give up. And what's more important is you will add the value on what you're doing. Even if you're a T-boy. Today I'll do Karak, to tomorrow, because I like this work, believe me, you'll be creative in what you're lacking. He'll do tomorrow Karak with Zafaran, tea, whatever, you know, like, you'll be famous in New York. So let us not decide someone else Decide for us what you want to be. My mother, she wants to be a lawyer. Uh, my father, he wants me to do this and that. But actually, what do you want? It's the same thing when your organization, they want to develop you. Yes, I, I joined the company uh, maybe as a you know, business developer. It's not bad like you have an idea, an event, or an HR, or actually you have a skill in each of this department, and you want to contribute, it's not bad. So don't stack and don't hide your skills. You are there to contribute what they have been giving you, but it's not bad like what you give more. And these things, no one will teach you. These things have to come from your inside. Great? It has to come from your inside because actually we are human beings, we have more than the skills. We can be a good speakers, when there's IT, they can be a good many things. So when, again, I'm saying, when your organization, organization pays for you for a course, like 10, 10 days course, to learn about something, but actually you're not into that. So most of the time it's really bad you see that um, a person has been sent maybe to any of, uh, you know, like country, and the, uh, the organization uh, spend a lot of money to develop his skills, but actually he don't like it. So he will just go there because that's a free ticket and, you know, like, I traveled. The, but who? The only person who loses it is you. The company give you opportunity, you didn't use it. Because why you don't like it? It's fine. Change it. You don't like to be an engineer and it's changed, it's fine. Right? Rather than you spend a time and the money and your self-value as well. You're not learning anything because actually you don't like what you do. 
Okay? So, yeah, let's make it shorter. So, today we're going to announce the already, uh, we have put here the three prizes for today. And I actually want to ask, everyone knows about what a submarine is? Yes, doctor? Any idea what is submarine? Yes, yeah, submarine boat. Perfect. Perfect answer. So what if I tell you we have a sub, an only submarine in Oman, which is returning to the hotel room? Will be excited to go in there? Are you sure? It's just 20 minutes from your, from your place now. So we wish you good luck. We're going to take a drawing now and uh, names of the winners for a submarine. We will start the submarine. So before going, take the winner. So we'd like to show a short, vi short video about what is in submarine. Uh, before we move on to the uh, prizes, can I just uh, ask a question? Sure, sure. Uh, so you talked about um, passion, which comes from the heart. And I think that's something that... Uh, it makes us more human compared to the technology and the robots that everyone was talking about that's going to start to replace us soon. <laughs> um, it will never, Omar. Uh, it will never replace us. We create Google, not the opposite. We created Google, correct, correct. Uh, but Google creates the information and the knowledge. Uh, so my question is, um, is passion a skill? And should we teach passion? Can we teach passion? We cannot. We cannot teach. But as I said, in each human being, there is a skill. The moment you find your skill, the passion will be there. You know? We find that people sometimes, they are writers, they write for 24 hours, you feel like, ah, oh, is they get bored? His skills is writing, but he found the skill, he put a passion on it. So that's why. I can tell you the, uh, the skills I've been learning in sailing, which is actually, till now, I'm still using them. A sailing is not only a sport, which is the start line and end line, and you finish, that's all. No, Omar. In sailing, we do have a lot. One of the skills I learned in sailing is a teamwork. A teamwork was really, really important because when you realize that your crew member, their life under your hand, then you have to be that, I need to do my part perfectly. Second thing is, that is emotion stability. When you see, uh, you know, like we sail over overnight, and what's happened, Omar? When you, when you reach to the harbor, Okay, and you find a journalist asking you, uh, where are you from? I say from Oman. Oh, the country the woman don't drive. Uh, sorry, it's Oman. Even Saudi Arabia, I'm, I'm sure they start driving. So here you sell for 24 hours and just someone come out of selling, asking you, uh, you are the woman not drive at your country. Uh, no, sorry, we drive. So here it teach you how I can be really careful what I'm saying. It teach me as well the self-confidence. When you are being the boat, when all those start land, we are like thousand boats, uh, sorry, it's like uh, 35, it depends how big regatta is, you start in one time. You know how many language people are there talking? Everyone is screaming to the maximum, you know, because we don't want to crash to each other. So when there, when you say any decision, you make sure you say it right, because any mistake coming from you will crash to other boats and be disqualified from the race. It shows me as well a motivation. How can be a, a motivated person? When we sail for a long time, long night, we already feel like, okay, we are just behind three, four boats, we are just doing nothing. I need that time to motivate myself before I motivate people around me. It teach me as well to be a confident. It teach me as well to be a risk decision maker. Take a risk and make a decision. We have been a lot of... Um, of you know, like experience. One of them, it's uh, knowledge. You know, to be a racer is not only to be a strong physically, mentally as well. So in the boat, we have a navigation, which is one of the skills you need to know in the boat, in navigation, it's calculation. So navigation, we had a crew of uh, many nationality in the boat. This is one story I never forget. We had a lot of nationality in our boat. We were sailing from Sana'a till uh, Mosendem. So what we do based on your experience on the boat, that we have a positions. And then uh, at night, the navigator, she was a French woman, uh, she was tired. So we ask our senior, uh, our uh, junior person, a beginner, we ask in the boat, like she can start to help because no one's around us till, I mean, like uh, early morning, like one hour maybe, you know, for her even to get experience. 
And then she went to sleep. When we wake up, not even, it was very early morning, and uh, she get out, they say, uh, Raya, is that a UAE flag? And they say, yes. And then we found that actually we are in Ras Khema, not in Amusendim. <laughs> then, of course, the small calculation, she did a mistake. Rather than to take an angle of 130, she take an angle of 135. Just five make us to another country. Then you know the French woman, oh, c'est pas possible, this is whatever, you know? So every skills you have, there's a lot I learned and I developed my skills in selling and navigation and team working. Um, until now, and the, the more important was uh, team leader. So when you have a crew, when you have people depend on you, you have to really to have that respect for everyone because you're not only an own one Omani, you have a different nationality, different uh, religions, different people, different uh, mind. So one of the skills I develop is the team leader, like how I can manage all these people to come in one hand and we make achievement. So yeah, thank you for that. Thank you, Raya, it's you're really- uh, Thank you, Raya. And um, you mentioned something important about risk taking and I think Failure also helps you to uh, have passion. Like you mentioned, it's dark in the evening and you're behind many boats, but it's keep pushing through all the difficult times. Uh, just one more question if I can very quickly. Yeah, sure. Um, do you think Oman has passion? Because when I've been to many events and conferences in other countries, for example, UAE, UK, um, I've seen in conferences such as this, uh, we have many, many people, uh, students, professionals, uh, who stay very late in the evening, like until 8 p.m., until 9 p.m., because they really value knowledge. They really value the opportunity to network and, and, and learn. Um, in Oman, maybe it's not so much the same. A lot of people, after they have lunch, they go home. Uh, do you think in Oman we lack passion for knowledge and skills? Well, I know, for example, we have passion for, in Oman, we have passion for, for example, um, football, uh, football morning, yeah. uh, food, uh, weddings. Is there a lack of passion in Oman for knowledge? Uh, we cannot say a passion in knowledge. I think it's like um, what they are interested in. You know, when they are uh, interested in, they will spend the time over there till ages. When it comes to sports, to be honest with you, they know only a football. So they can stay in the, in the podium there till early morning, right? When, as I said from the beginning, when the knowledge is missing, the skill is missing, there is no passion. They cannot be, you cannot be passionate of something you don't have a knowledge, you don't have a skill of it. So myself, I like to watch uh, uh, swimming. So the Olympic, I can stay uh, three, two hours just seeing the swimming Olympics, how it's doing. So they're not like they don't have that there, but um, maybe they're just spending their time somewhere else. You know, but people with the knowledge, they are there. Thank you, Raya. I have one question, and uh, probably this is something which uh, um, raising two girl children, which I'm blessed with, and into sports, into high-end, uh, high competitive sports, swimming and karate, both at uh, very good success level. How do you overcome fear because for me, yes, karate, when you fight, yes, you can get injured, you can kind of, you know, get blind or th this fear. In swimming, you can drown, you know, because you're really in a competitive swimming in very large lanes and you're kind of real exhausted. So there's a fear of death in swimming and the uh, fear of injury in karate, uh, which my two girls are, you know, excelling in, alhamdulillah. Now, sailing is even more extreme because you're sailing in the sea and sometimes maybe in the ocean and uh, as you rightly said one team member's mistake can kill all of you and and I, I, I know as much as little I know that there's not so much of rescue and other things available for sailing competition as there should be probably like help in hand or help in reach like how do you overcome fear like you know are you afraid of death are you kind of like, you know, getting up in the night that, you know, you're drowning. How do you overcome fear as a woman and as an Omani woman? Yes, uh, Sadiq, good question. In any sport, there is a, there is a you know, dangerous there. 
And yes, one of our uh, bad news in Oman said when I was in one, Oman said one of our uh, colleague he falls, he men over uh, over them, so he falls and we came to find his body after three months. So that is inna uh, It's happening. It's your uh, you know like uh, destiny. God have brought for you, but doesn't mean you put yourself in risk. How do we come over this? Of course. In sailing, before going to any boat, we had a lot of theories. Not only theories, but practice as well. How we can rescue ourselves. We know how even to stretch. If we have a wound, we, have no, we know how to stretch, but I'm not uh, to that. So we have a lot of practice. You have to practice. You have to practice the worst thing you are free in, on, on the sport itself. So don't just estimate it will happen. We, to learn theory in the table is different completely when you see it in the reality. So what we ask, we are putting, even we have a, a, a cloth, a special sailing cloth, even we are fall on the water, we know what to do. We have a sign, we have uh, things to rescue there, we have a medical, we have everything. Plus our crew have to know all this. Okay, so one of the, I, I forget, maybe I didn't share the picture, it's uh, when you call men overboard. So when you fall down, your crew immediately, of course the boat is not like a car, you can stop immediately. So what we do, we have a torch, we have safety equipment. When this safety equipment, you have all the crew, we have to know before even going to any regatta, there is a community come and make sure that everyone knows what is on the boat. And everyone knows what to do if this is happened. We have VHF, we have community following and when we go to the rest, but doesn't mean that you cannot fall, you cannot crash. Uh, of course, I'm sure some of the people asking us, did you crash? Yes, we crashed. But look stupid, like, how did you crash in the empty space and you're in the sea alone? How did you crash? It's true, we crash. Even airplane, they're alone in the, in the sky, right? How did they crash? Did they crash because they don't have the skills to lead this boat. When you know the skills, skills is not only what are you giving, actually, it's they will teach you. We have a signs on the boat. We have a signs on the sea. We have rules on the sea, actually. We have rules on the sea. So yes, they will ask us, yes, it's very stupid, like how do you crash in the empty space? A same thing with the airplane, how did they crash up there? Till now they're still crashing, la? Because there were skills are missing on the boat. Even a small knowledge they're giving you, you have to take it serious. There is a skill we have to learn. We have to develop, and these skills need to be enhanced with each person, either be yourself, or they have to teach you. But the more skills come, when you teach yourself, actually. I can sit here and uh, know like Omar, how to read, how to read, but when Omar discovered himself, how actually the method of reading, it will stuck in your mind forever. I'm glad you're ending this, uh, today's thing with reading. It started off with the vision yeah. for uh, future skills with read, and you know we, we had our UAE speakers speak about the first word of Quran to read, and we still don't read. So did you learn, learn to read in uh, skiing? Uh, yes, because actually, you know, like sometimes you may have a skill, but you don't recognize that I have it. Unless you, you sit on someone else and you feel jealous, how she can do this. Actually, you have it, you didn't just not uh, practice on it. You don't read actually how you can practice. My big example is like I was always, when I did my sailing path, everything, but always putting my mind like I want to do my MBA. It was a pleasure of learning, not just to get a good position or whatever, no. But actually, I want it always because I'm lucky when I was in, uh, in, the, in the college, I didn't bring good marks because I was the president of student council, so I, I like to do a lot of events and I had fun. I'm, no, I'm not regretting that. Sorry, Dean. I, liked, uh, I, I, I had fun and I like it. The only thing is disappointment, I didn't bring good GPA. It was only 2.7. So I said, you know what, I will just cover in master. And when I do my master, it takes me five years to plan for my master because I was afraid to start that, uh, uh, that point. You know why? Inside me, they say, yes, Ra, you can do it. You have a skill to do your uh, MBA. And another one said, no, 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 you're not ready. You're just going to spend money and halas. Uh, then what's happened? I said, no, I will just take. And I took my master. I supposed to be in Oman, but I saw the colleges in Oman. Maybe it could be easy for me. That's what I thought. And then I went and take it in Malaysia, and today, inshallah, by night, I will travel to take my certificates with the, with the, with the owner.
Thank you so much. Thank you for that, uh, Raya. I think what you show is that, and um, what we discussed before, is that not uh, marks are not everything, and everyone has their own journey. They just have to keep learning and keep developing, and we're all very proud of you. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Omar. Thank you so much.